Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So Outlaws at Thunder Junction. I did it again. Outlaws of Thunder Junction. One day I'll get this right completely and uh, let's just jump into the spoilers. There's so many amazing ones to talk about. Here we go. So first up, we've got a very spicy brand new mythic that, yeah, is really interesting. I can see seeing a good amount of play and takes a concept and makes it pretty unique. It's an artifact equipment. Four, three mana in Azorius. Assimilation Aegis, if I could talk. Assimilation. Assimilation? I think I got it. Uh, equipped to enters the battlefield, exile to one target creature until it leaves the battlefield. When it becomes attached to a creature for as long as it remains attached, that creature becomes a copy of a creature card exiled with it. So that's pretty interesting in that this is like... It's kind of like... Um, oh gosh, what is the one word ETB? I mean, it's like... Oblation ring, essentially, but uh, oblation ring, goodness, oblivion ring, if I could talk this morning, but it's that sphere one that also costs three in Azorius, but it's for specifically for like a creature, essentially, instead of just like any non-land permanent. This one does not specify, you know, your opponent's control, so you can target one of your own things if it makes sense to do so, which gives it more flexibility, and I like that. I like when they don't limit these things, wizards. Yes, I know you see through players like me, and they're like, well, we don't want you to just, you know, create like a loop. I like loops. Anyways, um, yeah, being able to exile a creature. This can be defensive in that, hey, if that player has a very scary creature on the board, like, say, a Blight Seal Colossus, cool. I now have an equipment that can turn any of my creatures into a Blight Seal Colossus. Grossly amazing. That being said, it can also be utilized again more in, I mean, I guess that's def defensively and offensively, but it can also be used against yourself as well, where... Yeah, okay, I've got this great creature in play. It maybe has, like, a great ETB, and I'm like, okay, like, I'll just, like, get rid of my own creature. I turn a copy of one of my other creatures, like, maybe, like, a tiny token into that, so it's still, like, I still have that big creature around. But also, if this ever gets dealt with, then all of a sudden that creature comes into play. So, again, because as long as... Uh, until this leaves the battlefield, then it comes back. So it's very interesting. Again, it's kind of like removal, but also like, I mean, uh, kind of cloning in a way, but also potentially ETB abuse as well. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on with this one. I really like the design of this one. We'll see where it sees play. Next up, Beast Spawn Outcaster. Sorry, I don't know why some of these, there's a couple of them that are a little blurry. So bear with me. A 3 3 Human Druid 4 2 in a green. Enters the battlefield if you control a creature with power 4, greater draw a card. You can plot this, so you can actually plot it for cheaper, which is nice. Meaning that you're getting a 3-3 for just 2 mana. And also, you kind of, like, save it until you have a creature that maybe has 4 power if you really want to do that. So, there is that nice kind of flexibility to something like this. Now, will this see play in Commander? Eh, maybe. Next up, uh, Black Stag Buzzard. And when I say maybe, I mean, like, for very specific decks, like power-oriented decks, most likely. 2-1 Bird. That costs 3 mana in black. Flying enters the battlefield, they counter onto a creature's eye this turn, plot for two mana. So again, this is more of a limited card, I would say. But yeah, again, interesting how they're working with plot. Next up, Boneyard Desecrator, a 3-4 zombie mercenary. The zombie designs in this set look really, really cool, by the way. The art. Uh, Menace for four mana. Uh, one a black sacrifice a creature, put a counter on it. If an outlaw was sacrificed, away, create a treasure token. So yeah, there's some synergies that you can utilize right there. There is that one pirate from back, I think it was like Ixalan years ago. Uh, where you could sacrifice creatures and make like two treasure tokens that wasn't limited to specific creatures So like yeah in an outlaw deck that might have some like sacrifice energies You might want to utilize this outside of outlaw decks Probably not maybe I guess pirate could utilize it as well. There you go uh, next up Bristle pack Sentry, a 3-3 three, three plant wolf because that's a thing with defender that costs one and a green as long as you can try a creature power for a greater it can uh, it can attack as though it didn't have defender so, yeah, I mean, I guess if you're playing a defender deck, yay. If not, probably not utilizing this. Next up, Dance of the Tumbleweeds, a source for two mana. Spree, though, with a little plus sign. Choose one or more additional cost. Pay an extra one. Search life for a basic land or a desert card, put on the battlefield, then shuffle. Or an extra three, create an XX green elemental creature token where X the number of lands you control. So, this is kind of like an overcosted ramp spell, but flexible. So, I mean, when I say overcosted, I guess, like, there aren't really ones out there like, hey, go get a baseline or a desert yet. I don't believe, actually, when it comes to that. I mean, there's one that can get you any land, but... So, this at three, I guess... 
makes sense in a way for that. But also, it does give you that flexibility where like, hey, you could also just make a giant elemental too. Is this better than other ones that are at three mana? Probably not when it comes to ramp. I mean, if you have a desert deck, then yeah, probably consider this one if you want to get specific deserts out. And also, if you have an elemental deck, maybe consider this one as well because you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to make a giant elemental because I've got these, you know, really cool lands. Or like populate decks might want to consider this too. Next up though, Discerning Peddler. A 2-2 two -two human rogue for two mana in red. Enters the battlefield and made his card a card if you do draw a card. Cool. Rummage if you'd like it. More of a limited card. Uh, next up. Jin of Fool's Fall, a 4-3 Jin with flying that costs 5 mana, plot for 4 mana. A good limited card, I guess. Next up, uh, Ariette's Lullaby. I know what I remember saying, like, Ariette, Ariette, uh, let me know in the comments below. Source for 1 and a white, just for a target, tapped creature you gain to life. More of a limited card. Again, sorcery speed, removal, not the best in Commander. Next up, Forsaken Miner, a 2-2 for 1 mana. Here we go. Can't block. Okay, that's fine. Uh, whatever you can make crying, you may pay black. If you do, return for second minor for greater to the battlefield. So, I like this design. And, and I apologize. Some of these, like, I've, uh, I, there's a lot of spoilers, so I've been putting them all on this list. And then, like, some I, like, kind of, like, scan through and see. And other ones, I'm like, oh, I didn't even read that one fully. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. So, reassembling Skeleton, essentially, but cheaper to get back out. But you have to be committing crimes to do so. So... You're not guaranteed to keeping this back out unless you've got ways to ensure that you are going to be committing crimes again, targeting opponents, anything they control, or cards in their graveyards. Yeah, if you can keep doing that, great. Being able to get this back is like a, again, amazing creature fodder for a Risk Rat style deck can be great. That being said, if you don't have that kind of ability, then yeah, it's not going to be all that good. That being said, in most Risk Rat style decks, like let's say you have like a Blood Artist those automatically are going to be targeting opponents. I mean, I guess I think it's target players. So you could just target yourself, I guess, but you're not going to be doing that. You're going to be targeting opponents. So again, like if you have like free sacrifice outlet, Viserys here, plus this, plus blood artists in play, sacrifice this, it goes into your graveyard. Your, you know, Viserys here is like, hey, uh, I sacrificed, I won, great, good for me. And then your blood artist is like, hey, drain that player one. Cool, you targeted that player. You know, pay, pay the one, bring this back from the grave of the battlefield. Sacrifice it again. This one, again, thank you, Wizards, because it seems like they keep doing this, like limiting to once each turn, which I guess this one really couldn't be because it would keep going in the graveyard separate, you know, as a separate instance, essentially. But yeah, not being limited to like, you can only do this once each turn somehow. I don't know how they limit that, but they didn't limit this one. So yeah, I like it. I like this one a lot. I think Risk Crats Out decks can definitely consider this one again, as long as you've got ways to commit crimes, which you probably do if you're in those decks, because they're really heavy typically on like those targeting effects when it comes to life loss or damage, typically. So, yeah, definitely a really cool, amazing piece of creature fodder. Again, the fact that it can't block doesn't really matter too much to those decks. It's also a 2-2 two -two for one. Just getting it down early could be nice. Skeleton Rogue decks can consider it too as well. Next up, Gold Pan. Equipment for two. Enters the battlefield to make a treasure token. Equip creature gets plus plus one. Equip one. I mean, sure, if you've got ways to, I guess, use and abuse ETBs with artifacts, maybe consider this one. Otherwise, yeah, I don't know if it's really all that worth it, even for an equipment deck. Unless you, like, really care about, like, maybe, like, a Valduk uh, deck. Is that the one, the red one? Where it's, like, it cares about low-cost equipment that don't cost much to attach, essentially. That can be good, too. And, like, a little piece of, like, temporary ramp for you with that treasure token. Next up, Hellspur Posse Boss. A 2-4 Lizard Rogue for 4 mana in red. Out of their Outlaws, you control a pace. So, yeah, Outlaw Tribal will love this, obviously. Assassin's Mercenaries, Pirates, Rogues, and uh, Warlocks or Outlaws. Enters the battlefield. Make two 1-1 one -one Mercenary tokens. So, that's nice. Again... Even in just like a base, I guess like a go wide token based strategy, this could just be good. Having, you know, three bodies for the cost of four mana is pretty decent. And uh, obviously, if you are in an outlaw tribal deck, yeah, pretty, really, really good for you because giving haste to all your outlaws can be great, be more aggressive, and obviously utilize those abilities, especially on the mercenaries, right away. Next up, Interpret Stable Master. Not sure why. Intrepid. There we go. I knew I was going to mess up on the name there, so I like to hell off for a second. Intrepid Stable Master. There we go. 2-2 two, two Human Scout with Reach uh, for 2 mana and green. Tap for a green. At 2 mana of any one color, spend mana only to cast a mount or vehicle spell. Or vehicle spells. Um, yeah, I guess if you have a vehicle deck, consider this, maybe. If you can, you know, utilize a, another creature in that one. But uh, other than that, I guess mount slash vehicle decks, obviously. Other than that, yeah. No, a 2-2 two, two Reach tap for a green isn't all that efficient. For, for green, typically these days, right? Next up. Uh, Irascible Wolverine? Nope, no idea what that word is. 3-2 Wolverine for 3 mana. Enters the battlefield, exit the top card of your library. Until end of turn, you may play that card. Plot for 2 and a red. This one's interesting because, again, like the other plot cards, like some have like more cost for the plot, some have less cost for the plot, some have the exact same. This is the exact same. And when you'd want to do this, actually, is like obviously if you're like, okay, like 
If I'm just playing this on curve at three, sure, if I want a three-two, great, good for me. But if not, I'm not going to be able to utilize that card at the top of my library unless it is a free spell or a land, and I haven't played my land for the turn. So being able to just plot this, save it for a later turn, can be better for you, obviously, so you can utilize that card, that temporary card draw, the impulse draw. Moving on. Kambal Stern Mentor. Kambal is back. Oh my goodness. A 2-4 Human Advisor for 3 mana in Orzhov. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under the opponent's control, create tapped copy of each of them. This ability triggers only once each turn. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, each point losing life, you gain one life. Brutal and gross. Uh, thank you, MTG Goldfish, for the translated version of these cards. I probably should have said that earlier. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty good. Again, whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under opponent's control, you create a tapped token, a uh, copy of all of them. So it is a one-off though, triggers only once each turn, but again, if they're like, I create 10 soldiers. Cool, now I get 10 soldiers right away, unless they're doing that separate instances. Um, at the very least, I mean, again, if someone else has a Smothering Tithe in play, now you kind of have a Smothering Tithe in play, kind of, in a way, because like that player is gonna be like, okay, they drew a card, draw, oh, cool, yeah, you get a treasure, I get a treasure. I mean, obviously it's limited just like once on that, because that is a separate instance, but still. My goodness, being able to just get miscellaneous tokens throughout the game is huge, especially with the way that Commander is these days with the amount of tokens that are being made. Again, either with token strategies, which are incredibly popular, or treasure strategies, which are even more popular. Yeah, that's amazing. And again, when you're doing that, you're also just draining your opponents, and that doesn't have a limiting factor. Again, this doesn't say this ability triggers only once each turn, so that is very, 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 very powerful. Kind of like a mini Mer Merkwood Bats, because the bats also keep in track, or keep track, uh, care about when the tokens at the graveyard too. So yeah, just be able to say, whenever I'm making tokens thanks to my opponents, or whenever I'm making tokens thanks to myself, I'm gonna be draining my opponents. It does limit that one though, one or, whenever one or more tokens. So again, if you just make like 10 soldiers at once, or like warriors with empty, or not empty, the secure the wastes, then you're only draining for one. That being said, if you've got like different instances of creating tokens, like, oh gosh, what open the graves or whatever that one is. Like you make a zombie whenever one of your creatures dies. Cool. Every single time one of your creatures dies, since it's a separate instance, you would then get a token, which then drains your opponent. So yeah, this can be a very, very powerful commander. I can see this being like a commander that you go heavy into trying to find ways to give your opponent tokens potentially that you also get token copies of. But yes, just making treasures on your own, making maybe clues on your own, making creature tokens on your own, and having a lot of separate instances to do so, maybe having ways to double up life loss, have ways to take advantage of whatever you're gaining life, your opponents lose life, those kinds of cards as well. This can be a very, very, very brutal commander and one that can be quite effective again, given the, the meta these days of just token creation and commander. Next up. Mine Raider, a 3-2 hidden rogue with trample for three mana, enters the battlefield to control another outlaw, create a trade token. Cool, again, I uh, mean, outlaw decks out there, might wanna consider this one. If you don't have an outlaw deck, probably don't consider this one. Next up, Outlaw Stitcher, a 1-4 human warlock for four mana, enters the battlefield, create two, two blue and black zombie rogue creature token, then put two counters on that token for each spell you've cast this turn other than the first. Interesting, so you can potentially make a pretty big zombie, nice, uh, and also plot it. So you can obviously spend a little bit more so you can save this and then utilize it when you need to so you can get more counters on that zombie. Uh, yeah, are there any really homes for the stack? I mean, maybe, I guess, if you're going, like, Outlaws because you get two of them, but other than that, I don't know. Next up, Patient Naturalist, a 2-3 Human Scout for three mana. Enters the battlefield, mill three cards, put a land card from among the mill cards in your hand. If you can't, create a token. They started to do that more and more these days where we are getting, like, those if you can't or if you didn't, you get an effect anyways, so you get a, a lesser effect. Uh, I mean, lesser in some ways, uh, but I guess it's not even lesser with it being a treasure. Um, but yes, uh, being able to, this doesn't give like the option. It's like, okay, you mill three cards. If you have a land among them, you have to do that. Put a land from among the mill cards. It's not like, you may. No, no, no. Uh, if you can't though, then you get the treasure token. So basically, this is either, I mean, self mill, which can work in a self mill deck, obviously pretty well. Uh, land in your hand from the graveyard that is ensuring you hit a land drop and then treasure token if not there's some synergies there too so it's a pretty interesting card again interesting that they're starting to go with more of these like less whiffy cards not whiffy cards but like no you cannot whiff cards essentially you're always going to get some value out of this no matter what the situation is next up raven of fell omens a one two bird with flying that costs two mana whenever you commit a crime each point lose one life you gain one life ah uh, this ability is only once each turn yeah i mean again some people point out to me in the comments below like if you didn't limit these they'd be broken it's like some of them maybe, but like, nah, let Johnny's Johnny. Uh, I 
don't think this one would be... I mean, it would be powerful. Very, very, very powerful. And you could definitely build a deck around, you know, committing crimes very easily and very quickly. So you could drain your opponents out in no time. But because they limited this, it's not useless, but not very good at all. With the most of each trip around the table is going to be draining your opponents for one each and you gaining one each uh, each turn. So that'd be, what, four and four. So I guess technically, what, 16 life drain total? That's not too bad. But again, I don't think this one need to be limited. Wizards, please stop. Next up, Reckless Lackey, a 1-2 Goblin Pirate with First Strike and Haste for a single red mana. I believe we actually saw this one in a leak, so this one just to be confirming it. Pay two in a red, sacrifice it, draw a card, create a token. Yeah, interesting. A very low to the ground. I mean, was it Raging Goblin? The uh, original, like, 1-1 one, one with Haste, essentially. Now we're seeing just how much better they're getting. Now, like, a 1-2 First Strike, Haste, that also is a pirate that also can be sacrificed to draw a card and create a token when you need to. So there you go. Is that Rise the Varmints? A uh, sorcery for four mana in green. Create X to one green varmint creature tokens or X the number of creature cards in your graveyard. You can also plot this for less. That's actually really good for the right decks out there. I'm trying to think of the one like spider spawning. Is that the one essentially that's like counting the number of creatures in your graveyard and making a one two spider with reach essentially for each one? I mean, typically you'd probably rather have a two one even without reach essentially versus a one two because you want to be a little more aggressive and offensive and be able to hit harder. Uh, and also, this only costs three mana, essentially, and you can plot it so you can save up, you know, that mana for a different turn to you. So, yeah, that that's pretty good. Again, like, kind of, like, wait until you have a crucial number of creatures in your graveyard, then utilize it. And again, just, like, utilize that mana on a separate turn. That's pretty good. Again, for the right deck, for a self-mill deck, for when they can get a lot of creatures in the graveyard, they're really going to like this. And also, for varmint decks, apparently varmints are now a thing. There you go. Next up. Rustler Rampage, instant for uh, white plus against what's a spree card. Choose one reddish for cost, plus one, untap all target, all creature target player controls, plus one, target creature gains double second until I turn. This is a very interesting one. Also, release the cows. That's an amazing. They're, they are just like going all in on like these cow jokes essentially with this set, which I think is hilarious. Um, but yes, being able to untap all your creatures at instant speed is quite nice uh, for. I mean, obviously, it's kind of like pseudo-vigilance in a way. So, like, your opponents are like, oh, they swung out at me. Now they're wide open. I'll swing at them. And you're like, ha, 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 no. Untap my creatures. And also, you can give one double strike, too. So, again, like, at the most, you're paying three mana for this, which it's still a pretty good effect. Or, yeah, on your turn, if you're just swinging through an opponent, you're like, okay, I get my commander double strike. You're you're gone. Uh, yeah, for just two mana, it's quite nice as well. But, yeah, being able to untap your creatures, that's huge. Again, not just for combat, but also for, like, decks that have maybe commanders like my Garth deck that's like, hey, tap, activate an ability. Yeah, yeah, this kind of a card's amazing for those. So, like, um, like vitalized type effects, essentially, but also flexible, and then it has that double strike aspect, which I think is really cool. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, a lot of, like, the untap all creatures you control are going to be two mana anyways. Most of them, I mean, like, vitalize is not, but, like, most of them are at two, uh, and having the flexibility to also give double strike something can be quite good too. So I like this card overall. Very good. And the flavor text is amazing. Next up, Shackle Slinger, a 3-2 human soldier, 4-2 in a blue. Whenever you cast your second spell, you churn, choose target creature bow controls. If it's tapped, put a stun counter on it, otherwise tap it. So being able to kind of like keep down creatures is pretty nice if you've got... If you've got a deck that is kind of built around casting a bunch of spells in your opponent's turns, I could definitely see this seeing some play because, yeah, being able to just lock down creatures is quite nice, and stun counters are a really nice way to do that in that they have to be, remove the stun counter when it comes untapped in order to actually start to get to it to be untapped, but, like, you're just going to keep putting more and more stun counters on them. Also, if you have prol prol proliferate effects, that can work very well. Is this for every deck? Absolutely not. But, like, again, if you've got, like, a spell sling on opponent's turns, I could see this kind of being some kind of, like, a... Like, lockdown condition, but, yeah, uh, very specific decks. Next up, Slick Sequence. Nice name. Instant for two mana, and is it? Two damage to any target. If you cast a spell turn, draw a card. So, basically, like, uh, you know, uh, gosh, why am I thinking? I'm, I was thinking of Bolt, but it's not Bolt. Shock. Sheesh. Two mana, Shock. Uh, plus cantripping, essentially, as long as you're casting another spell. So, yeah, I guess if you have a spell slinger deck and you care about dealing two damage, cool. But, I mean, typically, you probably want to deal a little more, little more damage than that, in, at least in Commander. So, I personally don't think this one's going to see too much play. Next up, Slick Shot Vault Buster. A 1-4 Human Rogue with Vigilance for 3 mana in blue. Plus 2 plus 0 as long as you commit a crime this turn. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's not that, that that's definitely a limited card. Next up, Steer Clear. Again, the, the cow jokes are hilarious uh, in this set. Instant for a single white mana. 2 unit target attack and blocking creature. Deals 4 damage to that creature if you control a mount or, as you cast a spell. Very specific. Again, I guess if you're in a mount deck and really want... Cow jokes, congratulations. But even if you just have a mount deck, this is not really all that good. Next up, Stingerback Terror. Here we go. 
A 7-7 seven, seven Flampler for four mana. My goodness. Okay, but it does get minus one, minus one for each card in your hand, so keep that in mind, obviously. Uh, but also plot for just three mana. So you can plot this away and then utilize it on a turn. Maybe we have less cards in your hand or have, like, no hand. So, yeah, those, like, no hand, like, Malfagor decks are going to love something like this, potentially. If they want, like, just a 7-7 seven, seven for three mana, congratulations, Flying Trample. Uh, yeah, I mean... Could definitely see play in certain decks out there. It is technically a dragon, but again, like, oh, like the most popular commander out there for dragons, I think, still is Ur, or is it Miriam? I think it's Ur still. Regardless, like, if you're in an Ur dragon deck, it kind of works against that because, like, you're going to get a lot of cards in your hand with that attack trigger and, like, other things too. So you're going to be like, oh, my 7 7 is now just gone because I drew too many cards. So it's not like for every kind of deck out there, but, like, it is just a really cool card again for decks that care about getting low in cards in hand or just want like big powerful creatures just out quickly and can do that yeah that's pretty cool next up tumbleweed rising sorcerer for one and a green you can plot it later or plot it for a later turn for one extra man actually two and a green create an xx green elemental creature token where x a grace power and creatures you control love this um yeah so decks like my hotline fling deck built around mr orfeo all about getting big creatures in play doubling up their power uh and then flinging them at people can be great with a card like this again this is basically like two mana whatever my biggest creature is and again at the time because like let's say i have a 10 10 in play and then i go to combo with mr orfeo and i double it to a 20 20 essentially and then yeah i cast this once it survives and then i have a 20 20 for for two mana essentially so or even for free, again, if I plot it earlier. So, yeah, decks like that, they care about, like, having big creatures in play. This is just, hey, here's another great way to get a big creature in play. You got Populate as well, those kinds of effects. That's absolutely amazing. That being said, it is a specific card for specific decks. If you don't really just have a good amount of big creatures in your deck, hey, you probably don't want this. Or ways to play with power again. Obviously, in green now, we're starting to get more and more ways to, like, double up power, too. Like, I think it's Unnatural Growth, whatever that one is. Um, yeah, we got ways to double power, ways to take advantage of that. Make sure you're considering a card like this. Next up, Vengeful Townsfolk. 3-3 three, three human citizen for 3 mana in white. Whenever one or more of the creatures you control die, put a counter on it. Eh, I mean, not really all that good. And it, it got limited a bit. Again, with like one or more. I don't think it really needed that, but that's just me. Uh, so yeah, again, like if a massive amount of creatures die at once, you don't get to take advantage of it. But if they die one at a time, cool, you get to take advantage of it. And this can become pretty big. Again, don't really see playing commander, I wouldn't think. Next up. This one I'm going to dig deep into with some budget buys and pricier picks. Giralf is back, the, uh, which we assumed, I guess, if Geese was here too. The Flesh Rite, a 2-3 Human Warlock for 3 mana in blue. Whenever you cast a spell during your turn, other than other than your first spell that turn, so that's very specific, okay? Create a 2-2 blue and black zombie rogue creature token. Whenever a zombie enters the battlefield under control, put a plus one counter on it for each other zombie that enters the battlefield under control this turn. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. Again, very specific way in that you're making zombies. So, like, here's the thing. Like, this is kind of, like, adjacent to, like, a tall rand. Tall rand is specific in that it's, like, okay, casting instants and sorceries. That's when you're making your tutus. This is, okay, no, it doesn't matter what spell you're casting. Cast any spell, but not your first spell on your turn. So, whenever you cast a spell during your turn, not the first one, though. Your opponent's turns do not matter when you're casting spells. You are not getting zombies off of this. So keep that in mind. So again, you kind of have to dedicate things in your hand to be casting on your turn, which is not exactly what you want to be doing as a commander player sometimes, especially if you have like a spell slingy type deck. You usually want to like hold up your mana before your turn and then cast all your things on your opponent's turn, essentially, so you can be more flexible. That being said, the payoff on this is huge in that, again, if you are kind of like spell slingy, storming, not storming because it's not kind of copy spells, but like spell slinging, casting a lot of spells on a single turn, like, let's say you cast five spells on your turn, not including the first one, you're going to be getting a 2-2 zombie for each of those. But again, you're going to be making a larger and larger zombie each time. So again, first spell does not matter. Second spell, you make a 2-2. The next one makes a 3-3. The next one makes a 4-4. The next one makes a 5-5. Five, five. Uh, I mean, I guess I just kept adding, but yeah, you know what I mean. Essentially, you're going to be making bigger and bigger zombies. Obviously, if you're already having other zombies enter the battlefield in different ways, you're also getting more counters on them from that. And also just miscellaneous, like, zombies that you have, not miscellaneous, but zombies that you have in the deck that even aren't tokens that you're making or putting in play, you're getting extra counters on them too based on other zombies coming into play, so keep that in mind as well. So this, to me, is like... Kind of like a, gosh, what is it? Giada Fount of Hope? Is that the, the angel one uh, that got really popular? Um, that like gives you more counters based on the number of angels in play. So it's kind of like a mashup of that plus like a tall ran, but like on your turn-ish. So 
yeah I, I like the design of this one i think it's pretty interesting again it forces you to dedicate a lot of resources on your turn to really get the most out of this i mean obviously you still can get benefits of that second part like whenever a zombie enters the battlefield control counter on for each other zombie enters the battlefield control this turn there's other ways to benefit from that like on your opponent's turns too maybe have like a blink effect or those kinds of things as well if you can like blink things or get things back in your graveyard to play or whatever it is i guess you're in blue not not blue black but still there's other ways to take advantage of that that being said most of the time you're gonna be taking advantage of all this just by casting a ton of spells on your turn and getting a lot of zombies into play and there's some pretty gross things that you can do with that so again let's jump into those budget buys let's jump into those pricier picks every single card i'm talking about is going to be in that card list description <laughs> card link description card link in the description there we go now before i mess up further let's go so first up in the budget buys again cards that are less than one dollar within my budget even yeah the name of the game when it comes to this kind of a commander when it comes to casting a lot of spells in a turn is going to be well ramp obviously efficient ramp is really good but also reduction reduction can help you a lot to save you a lot of mana throughout the turn so you can cast more and more spells even some maybe for free humble awakening spells cost one to cast this does benefit your opponents keep that in mind it does benefit your opponents but it's also going to benefit you potentially the most again if you build your deck correctly around this where again you're like okay i got a bunch of spell singing cards that work really well together if i can reduce their cost every single one of the cards cost I'm going to be in a good place. Next up, though, Case the Ransack Lab. This one is more specific, but an amazing card. I can't believe it's still budget friendly right now. Instant source spells you cast cost once cast. That's already great, again, for three mana enchantment that is low to the ground. And again, this commander, unlike Tall Rand, is not limited to just instant sources. Again, it's any spells on your turn other than the first one. That being said, when it comes to spell slinging, typically you're going to be spell slinging with a lot of low to the ground instants and sorceries is probably what you're going to be doing for the most part. I guess you really can. If you really want to go actually go potentially an even more broken direction, though, you could go like Artifact Storm. That is a different direction, though I will say, and the reason I didn't really bring up all those cards uh, is because I personally have tried Artifact Storm and uh, a lot of people don't like playing against it because you end up having like 20, you know, minute turns with your Joy Redex. So uh, some people don't like playing against that. That being said, it can be a very effective build with this commander. But if you are going in sorceries with this, it's a great one. On top of that, you can solve this one. You've cast four or more in sorcery spells this turn. Solved. Whenever you cast in sorcery spell, draw a card. Absurdly effective. My goodness. Again, now you're just like spell slinging, making more zombies that get bigger and bigger and bigger and also drawing more cards, which maybe even are more spells that you can cast to make it even bigger next up someone's anvil this one's more specific as well imprint enters the battlefield may exile a nominal card from your hand spells you cast the cherry card type with the exile card of still to cast especially good again in artifact decks if you are going for that artifact storm great if not if you are going again going spell slinging typically you're probably gonna have mostly like instants i would say probably so if you can get rid of one of instant in your hand to make the rest cost two less that is massive that is huge speaking of which mind splice apparatus flash this in before your turn the beginning of your upkeep on an oil counter on it in sorcery spells you cast cost one less cast for each oil counter on it if you got proliferate effects obviously this can speed things up even further but yeah over time your sorcery is going to cost less and less and less and this can be absolutely huge next up on top of ramping obviously you can have like other spells that are just like giant one-off ritual effects and one of the best ones out there is high tide for a mono blue deck until i turn whenever a player helps your opponents as well technically taps an island for mana that player adds additional blue obviously they have to have islands for that to you know, actually help them that being said if you've got a bunch of basics in your deck which you should play more basics everyone yeah this can be an amazing card just like oh yeah pay one mana cool that counts for like my storm count for the turn for my commander but also oh all my islands which i have say seven more of them now just double production essentially and again if you can like copy this even more so next up opt scry one draw a card for one mana yeah these low to the ground cantrips can be amazing again doesn't really matter if you have yourself set up yet with you know those different cost reduction effects or something like this but it can just replace itself be very good essentially and just really help you out next up though when it comes to cost reduction that can really help with cards like think twice instant for one to blue so again putting it down to just a single blue again makes it into a cantrip just draw a card that's all it does but you can also flash it back for two and a blue and again if that's reduced again by two cool just cost two mana essentially draw two cards two separate casts again which can really help with this commander again the name of the game is cast more and more spells so again spells that can be cast twice like this one can be absolutely huge rebound can be great as well to consider next up frantic search instant for two and a blue so it does cost three mana but wait draw two cards discard two cards untap up to three lands it's basically a free spell technically free but also if you have like say a bounce land in play that taps for two or getting you high tide yeah you can gain even more mana off of it 
Regardless, though, just having a free spell to cast that is a great looting effect for you is amazing because, obviously, again, it adds to your storm counts. Keep that in mind. Una's Grace, a repeatably casted spell like this one can be awesome for you as well. Instant for two and a blue. Target player draws a card. Retrace so you can recast from your graveyard by discarding a land. It depends on other costs. So, again, as long as you have a land in your hand, you can essentially replace that land with a cast from this. And, again, you're just adding to that storm count for your turn. And, again, with that cost reduction, if you can get to two, this just casts you one mana and discarding a land every single time you want to do this and that can be absolutely huge in making your zombie army speed away zombie army uh rise in the tides take advantage of cards like this sorcery for six mana but again cost reduction can really help with that too great tap two two black zombie creature token for each instant sorcery card in your graveyard again if you're leaning heavily into the spell slinging aspect of this you know instant sorceries can help you out a lot getting a lot of those in your graveyard casting this getting a ton of zombies into play and again if you've got cost reduction or ramp or other ways to get more mana cool cast some more spells make some more zombies get more counters on these again your zombies are going to be seeing each other when they're coming to play too so they're going to be getting a lot of counters on them with something like this next up what can help draw Giralf, visionary stitcher a one four human wizard for three mana zombies you control flying giving your zombie tokens flying is amazing again some of them are going to be really heavy hitters and if not again they're just like tutus which can already be amazing you know we, we know that tutu flyers can be amazing <laughs> you know like tall rain essentially but also pay a blue tap sacrifice another non-token creature make an xx zombie or x sacrifice creature's toughness there might be times where you want to sacrifice one of your actual creatures non-token and then get a zombie into play keep in mind that does count toward you know your zombie count for the turn for getting counters on things next up eternal sky lord Hey, here we go again. Zombie tokens you draw flying. So your zombies tokens now also flying with this. And there's battlefield of mass too. So it makes a little zombie for you as well. I mean, I guess a zombie army that has two counters on it. But yes. Next up. Empty laboratory. If you are leaning into having like a decent amount of like zombies in the deck too. Or just a couple even. Sorcery for X blue blue. Sacrifice X zombies. Real cards to the top of your library to reveal a number of zombie creature cards. Equal the number of zombie sacrifices way. Those cards go on the battlefield. The rest go behind your library in random order. Again, you can sacrifice your zombie tokens like your tiny little 2 ones. Be like, okay, you guys go away. All of a sudden, yeah, it's a massive, really valuable zombies off the top of my library. And they go right into play. Reconnaissance mission. Utilize your massive army to really take advantage of just the massive size of it. And be really aggressive with a card like this. Enchantment for four mana. Whenever a creature control deals counter to a player, you may draw a card. This, any kind of coastal piracy type effect, can be very good when you are going super wide with a deck like this. Be careful with this next one, but it also can be very, very good for you. Undead Alchemist, a 4 2 zombie itself for four mana. If a zombie control video combination to a player, instead of that player mills that many cards. Whenever a creature card is put in an opponent's graveyard from their library, exile that card and create two, two black zombie creature token. This one kind of takes out like one of your win conditions for you, which is just like the hitting your opponents for a ton of damage, essentially, right? But it does, in a way, switch your win condition to mill and also just make you more and more zombies. So again, like if you hit an opponent for like 20 damage with your zombies, That'd be nice to, like, put them at half health or even take them out. But also, it's like, okay, hit them for 20. All right. Oh, uh, you had 10 creatures in there? Cool. All right. Let's take those 10 creatures away. They get exiled, which is really nice. And also, I get 10 more 2-2 zombies that also come to play with a lot of counters on them. So, again, be careful with this one because it kind of takes away from, like, your normal win condition and changes it to a different one, but also can help you make an army. But also, I guess if you've got a way to bounce this or sacrifice this once you've made an absurd amount of zombies, be like, yeah, okay, let's take my opponents out with, like, regular damage. You can do that as well. Next up, though, it's one of the pricier picks. And again, a reminder, every single one of these cards in that card list link in the description below. First up, Field of the Dead, a land. Enters the battlefield tapped. Taps for a colorless. Whenever it or another land enters the battlefield under control, if you control seven or more lands with different names, create a 2 2 black zombie creature token. Very simple, very easy way to make a lot of zombies throughout the game. And again, getting that zombie count up can be big. Next up, Poppet Stitcher, a 2 3 human wizard that says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create 2 2 black zombie creature token with Decayed. So, this one, again, is kind of like a Tall Ran, but like with, uh, you know, Tall Ran, like kind of like spliced onto your commander in a way. It's, it's very interesting because, again, now all of a sudden, if you lean really heavily again into instants and sorceries, like a spell slinger type approach, you're getting like double the zombie token production on your turn, which is amazing. That being said, these zombies have decayed, so obviously they're not as great in combat, but that's okay. Getting of your of getting of your upkeep, if you control three or more creature tokens, though, you can transform it. You don't have to, but you can. You flip it over and it turns into Pop It Factory. Creature tokens you control lose all abilities at base power time is three three. If you have your upkeep, you may transform it. So if you do at a certain point say like i want to be really aggressive in attack and i do have those decayed creatures cool let's flip this actually make all my zombies slightly bigger again three three base power instead of two two also plus all the counters they have on them as well and then also taking that decayed away 
And when you want to transform this back, you can as well. So it's interesting. Next mate. Next up, Archmage Emeritus. Yeah, I mean, right when this thing was printed, you're like, that's never going to be budget friendly. Uh, whenever you cast, an cast or copy an Sorcerer spell, draw a card. Turning all of our, you know, spell slinging cards into cantrips is pretty incredible. So yeah, definitely consider this. Necro Duality. If you are, you know, utilizing a good amount of non-token zombies in your deck, definitely consider this one. Whenever a non-token zombie enters the battle from your control, create a copy, tokens copy of it. That obviously can be very, very, very impactful. Obviously doubles up ETBs as well. Notorious Throng. This might be a weird include, but make sure you're considering it. It's a Tribal Sorcery Rogue for 4 mana, or you can Prowl it for 2 more mana, which I would recommend doing. Again, play this card for its Prowl cost. If you don't combat damage to a player this turn with a Rogue, the zombies that your commander is making, the commander is making, are also Rogues. So make sure you're considering that and keeping that in mind. Put X11 Black Fairy Rogue Creature Tokens of Flying to Player. X is the damage dealt to your opponents this turn. So that's already nice. Again, like your zombies, you're making a ton of them. Let's say you hit again for 20 on your opponents. Cool, make 20 1 1 Flyers. That's massive. But on top of that, if it's Prowl Cost, is paid, take an extra turn for this one. So again, getting through with just one zombie turns this into an extra turn spell for two extra mana. Yeah, sign me up for that. So again, basically you're saying like, okay, I got through with a bunch of damage. Oh, um, by the way, I'm making an absurd amount of 1-1 flyers, and also I get an extra turn. So you're all probably gone. <laughs> just be able to take your opponents out like that. You can probably do that. Uh, next up, Horde Wing Scab, a 3-3 zombie that has flying. Other zombies you can draw flying, so again, just right there. Giving your zombies evasion is huge. Whenever one or more zombies you control deal combat damage to one or more of your opponents, you may draw a card, deal a number of opponents, deal damage display if you do this card that many cards. So not necessarily card advantage, but card selection that can be huge as well on top of that evasiveness that this gives you. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts are on these spoilers. There's a lot of amazing spoilers coming out, including some really exciting commanders. If you are interested in draw, make sure you check out that card list link in the description below. Of course, stay, this channel, stay tuned to this channel for your more exciting quick takes and spoilers. And before I trip over any more of my words, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.